So, deep breaths, everyone. Let's come into sacred space together. So we're going to come into Sarah's circle because it's Sarah that we're bringing in today. And I will tell you all about her in a moment. So just imagine that you're in a circle somewhere. It could be in nature. It could be in a temple. Somewhere where you feel like is a sacred place to you. And we're going to call Sarah. We're going to call Sarah into the centre of the circle. And her energy comes in. And as her energy comes in, grounds us and it expands us. And Sarah's presence has a strong effect on us. Sarah integrates. She brings us back into wholeness. I'm just going to leave you sitting in that energy for a moment. And then I'm going to read through. It's kind of the first channeling I did from Sarah. And I read it again from time to time. And when I do, I always see something new in it. <laughs> something new gets revealed. So today is going to be a mix of me talking and telling you about things. And I know some of the people watching this will have never heard of the work that I do or possibly of Sarah. So there'll be stuff for people who are new to this and there'll be stuff for people who are well versed in everything that I'm saying because I've been doing this since 2005 and some of you have been following me since then um, and we're going to be I'm going to be showing you uh, some really simple ways to work with balancing these polarities within ourselves but all in good time so we're sitting in Sarah's circle now we're sitting in her energy Sarah's sacred circle and if anybody else comes in to join us they will also come into this vibration that we've created together. So, Sarah came to me first in 2005 and she presented herself as the daughter of Mary Magdalene. And that was quite a clever way to present herself to me because I'm a priestess of the goddess I have worked a lot with the divine feminine energies, they're very much a part of my soul. And to present herself as a feminine lineage was a, a, a way to, you know, ingratiate herself with me. 
because <laughs> I love Mary Magdalene's energy. So I just went, oh, Mary Magdalene's daughter. I love you. <laughs> um, I'm not a Christian. I'm not on anything. I have my own kind of brand of spirituality, as many of us do. Um, and, you know, I think Sarah appeals to lots of different types of people and lots of different types of way. And I think they're all fine. They're all OK. But let me let me um, read this channeling out. You can find this channeling on my website. If you go to rachelgoodwin.dk and go onto the Sarah page, you'll get a pop up that says, have you heard Sarah's call or something like that? And if you tick yes to that, then you'll get this channeling and you'll get a load of other stuff in a, in a PDF. And it's also, it's also in this book here, which is the first book that I've written currently on number two, number three has a plan for next year. Okay. So, <clears throat> You might like to close your eyes or just go into quiet space while I read this out to you. Welcome all. I am the Ascended Lady Master Sarah. She who was born to the Master Jesus and the Magdalena, Mary Magdalene. I have come to tell you of my news that I am returned here once again not in physical form, but through conduits, sources of energy, through the hearts of mankind. My light, my power is being given birth on the earth. This birth is happening as we speak, as you read these words, my love, my light, the power that I represent is manifesting onto the physical planes. These are mysteries which are the divine's gift to you. Mankind has paid heed to the call. Light workers across the planet have worked and toiled, struggled and persevered lifted their hearts and minds in love and joy. And so the vibrational energy of the collective consciousness of humanity and of the earth has risen enough that my arrival has been achieved. But first, let me explain to you some of what this means. My energy represents the fusion of and perfect balance between the Christ energy, the divine masculine, and the Magdalene flame, the divine feminine. I am these two energies combined to create a third and perfectly balanced harmonious energy. This energy has not been present on the earth plane before this moment. In my lifetime, I held the energy which was born as I was from the sacred union between my parents. I was the receptacle for this perfect power, but was simply a vessel to hold the power as it was not the time for this energy to be birthed upon the world. Since that time, I have held the imprint of the energy within my soul's pattern so that one day when the conditions had been sufficiently met and all was in place, mankind and all of physical manifestation could be impregnated with this awesome power through me, the conduit for this power. This is my work then to birth this power across the earth. As the master Jesus held the Christ flame and my mother Mary Magdalene birthed the Magdalene flame. So I hold my power, which is symbolized by my flame. And I bring it to you, to all of physical manifestation.
The timing of this birthing has been designed to coincide with the coming of the age of Aquarius and is indeed the energy which will bring about the age of Aquarius. This power which is being gifted to you is no small thing. Being gifted to you, indeed it is, because now it is present upon the earth plane. It is present upon the earth grid and so is freely available to all with intent to use it. I have come to help you achieve many things. If it helps you feel more comfortable, you could think of my existence as a metaphor for the perfect joining of two polarities to create a third. No one can prove of whether or not I existed upon the earth, but as a concept of an energy born from the sacred union of the divine masculine and the divine feminine, I am most believable. I represent the sacred divinity which is within each of us. I am the awesome power of my father and the awesome love of my mother combined to make a third most incredible power. Open your hearts and breathe me in. I am there already lying dormant, waiting to be awakened. My energy can be seen as the bright green of nature, the colour of spring, new leaves growing on the branches, abundant growth. My father performed many miracles. I am here to light up your hearts so you can perform those miracles yourself. Remember who you are. You are the divine made manifest, the divine clothed in the wonders of matter. It is time to awaken, time to remember. You are not the consciousness of your body and your mind. They are the physical manifestations of you. Each of you is the divine, birthed into manifestation, given individual consciousness. I have come to help you remember what you already know, to empower you to be the perfect and divine beings that you are. The whole world, the whole universe has been waiting for this moment and now it is here. I have come. I have come. I am here. I am here. A messenger for the divine who wishes for it to be known that the time has come but a message of hope and joy to be spread across the earth. All is well, all is well, all is well. My power, my light, my love will grow exponentially upon the earth in the years to come. If you like, you could liken me to the power of spring, for I have come to usher in a new era a new beginning, not just for mankind, but for all of existence. I am new beginnings, new hopes. My power will seem at first to grow slowly, but this is because in reality, enormous surges of power will be required to overcome the inertia of the old. And what has been, and help it to flow in a new way, to seek out new pathways. You can, if you wish, help my flow to gather pace by calling on me, bringing my energy into you, breathing it into you and sending it out into the world. Wherever you feel it has need, or simply calling on me and grounding me into the earth, and of course you can call on me to manifest in your own life. In wishing to empower you to be the perfect and divine beings that you are, my energy will help you grow ever towards your highest potential, your greatest possible brilliance at any given moment. 
your greatest capacity to, for love in all things, from the smallest to the greatest act, thought or feeling. There is much that I have come to teach you, much that I have to give. But for now, let it be enough for me to tell you that I am here, I have come, that I am full of joy and love for humanity and manifest creation. Let your heart sing and be proud at what you have achieved through the power of your own free will. I am here because of you. You are bringing about the age of Aquarius. Jubilations to all. May love and blessings shower down upon the new earth, created anew in each moment. Bright blessings, Lady Sarah. So that was, I think, the first channeling I ever put out from Sarah in 2006. And I've really witnessed that part that, where she talks about where things start slowly and then start to gather pace. Because it's started to gather pace now. For many years, I've been witnessing it going slowly although i've been really conscious of her energy here it hasn't reached out to the consciousness of humanity but in the last two years things have really 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 started to gather pace with her there was a few things i was underlining as we were going through that channeling and i just wanted to go back to some of them because I think they're worth a little bit more discussion or thought about it. One of the things that Sarah says is, I have come to tell you of my news that I am returned here once again, not in physical form, but through conduits, sources of energy through the hearts of mankind. And what she was meaning, what I've understood her to mean from that, is that she's not coming back as one person in the same way that Yeshua was holding the Christ light by himself. However, <laughs> Sarah works in different ways with us. Some of us have had lives with Sarah and she's holding a very, very specific archetypal energy of oneness. And it has a sort of a, 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 a lot of things that are in that. The life force energy, this green of nature is one of them. So if we imagine this sort of green energy. Now the old Norse have this lovely old concept in the mythology of there being the web of weird. And the web of weird is if we imagine like a weave of threads and we all have our own thread and we're all born onto a weave that already exists and so the whole of humanity is this big weave in this web and each culture has many many different strands of color now if we imagine sarah as a green this beautiful bright green of nature this is from an another channel in that she gave me but we can imagine that this green weave weaves up and down and sometimes it's at the top which means it's in the consciousness of humanity and other times it goes right down again which means it's in the subconscious of humanity and some of us have been working with her through different lives so Sarah's had lots of different lives as many of us have and in lots of different cultures and places around the planet it's not just this one life where she was Yeshua and Mary Magdalene's daughter um, Egypt is one that's really really been coming up 
a lot lately, but also um, Scandinavia, Eastern Europe, Africa, um, Malta. They're just the ones that are coming into my head at the moment. And there have been those of us who have worked with this thread of bright green along with her. She hasn't been like holding this on her own. So that's one way that, that some people connect to her. They will actually have this sort of bright green energy as part of their soul energy. Another way that people connect to her or are connected to her, and this is sort of going back to the thing where I was sort of saying, she's not coming back as a person. There are thousands and 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 thousands of soul aspects of Sarah out there. So each of us have this huge soul, our higher selves, the energy is just so massive. It's like our little minds, it's like, it's, it's a bit too much for us to comprehend. And when each of us come down here, we just manifest a bit of our soul. We can't bring it all in. We manifest the bit that we need to work with in this lifetime. And it's the same with Sarah. Um, so there's a lot of people who feel that they're Sarah and their soul aspects. And some of those people are aware that they're part of a collective and other people feel like they're the only one of Sarah. But my my kind of sense around that is because that's because of the illusion of separation that we sort of are burdened with or suffer from um, when we come down into physical manifestation and at some point that veil is is lifted and then we realize that you know we're not separate in any way but anyway i'm getting into i'm getting into details is it this is why it's really good for me to to get back to some of these original things because in some way I've sort of like been studying this for 16 years now and I'm like some sort of boring old professor of esoteric Sarah um, stories and I can get really boring <laughs> getting into all the details of all of it but I just I wanted to like clarify that um, there's also so oh well, no I'll talk to that I'll talk about that the galactic bit in a minute so um, I've underlined this bit here. And so the vibrational energy of the collective consciousness of humanity and of the earth has risen enough that my arrival has been achieved. So Sarah couldn't come until it was the right moment. Just like Yeshua couldn't come until it was the right moment and the Magdalene couldn't come until it was the right moment. We need to have these flames. So each of them have a flame. There's the divine masculine flame that Yeshua holds. There's the divine feminine flame that the Magdalene holds. And then there's this unity flame that Sarah holds. And they all have to come at the right point of development in humanity. Because if they came at the wrong point, it would not really not be helpful and just cause a lot of chaos. So things have come to the right vibration now on the planet for, for Sarah to be here. Okay, there's another bit I've underlined here. So I hold my power, which is symbolized by my flame, and I bring it to you to all of physical manifestation. So Sarah is not just a thing for Earth. It's like across the whole of physical manifestation. And when I say physical manifestation, physical manifestation, I don't just mean the Earth. And also, I don't just mean that which we can see with our physical eyes, because everything that exists on this realm, all of our energy bodies, they are all in physical manifestation from the, the, the slowest vibration to the fastest vibration, all of those things. So this involves so many spheres and so many realms. And also, of course, you know, all of the, the galaxy and um, the whole of like outer space, if you like. So just to just to make that point. But Sarah is just a face for this archetypal energy. She's not the archetypal energy herself. And I'm sure 
that she there are others i have to say that i'm saying that because that, that's just like logically i've never i've never come across one and thought oh that's another one but you know maybe i'm too focused on on sarah anyway but <laughs> that archetypal energy of the divine belongs to the divine and sarah is a way for us to understand it through her she is like a human face um but you know actually i experience sarah as energy i see her as green energy and that is how i knew she'd first like turned up as it were and was working with me because i was seeing green all the time every time i shut my eyes um i work a lot with color like that when Yeshua's there, I see yellow. When Mary Magdalene's there, I see pink. When it's Mother Mary, I see blue. Um, so that's that's just you know one of the ways that I work. It's not. I'm not saying you should see that color because other people see different colors, and that's all you know. Fine and fantastic. Now I was just what was I? I was thinking about. Oh yeah, which I just mentioned briefly while I'm thinking about it. So, because people say, oh, well, you know, you call her Sarah and this, that and the other. And I say, yeah, but I've got to call her something. I can't call her the, the, the energy that I see as green. <laughs> and I'm not fixed on a particular name for Sarah. I think all of the names that she has gathered in her mythology are fascinating and interesting and they all show us a different aspect. So some of the ones off the top of my head that I can think of are Sarah Tamar, Sarah La Kali, which means Sarah the Black. And there's also um, a Sarah where you see it with an S-A-R, an apostrophe and an H. And I think that's more of a Middle Eastern way of spelling it. I've also seen the name spelled S-A-H-R-A, which again, I think is a Middle Eastern way of spelling it. And I really like those, those last two, by the way, they're, they're sort of two of my favorites, but I, I tend to just stick to plain old boring Sarah just because it's easier. <laughs> okay, so the next bit that I've underlined Oh, I think it was the same point that I've just made, actually. If you like, you could liken me to the power of spring, but I have come to usher in a new era, a new beginning, not just for humankind, but for all of existence. Yeah, so everything, everything in manifest creation is going through an upgrade, basically. It's not just us, it's not just Earth. It's the whole of creation. It's massive. We're just... You know, we're all on a journey on our way back to the divine. I was going to say on our way back to the light, but you know, the light and the dark, they're both part of the divine. And when we come into divine fullness, we integrate the dark and the light. We don't just become light and get rid of the dark. Okay, so those were the things that I wanted to tell you from. <sighs> Ooh, ooh. I can hear myself talking. Don't want to hear myself talking. There, I've muted myself. So I am going to tune into Sarah and see where we should go next. You can also just take a moment to of quietness. I wanted to say quietitude. I think I've just made that word up. I do that. I love making words up. <sighs> so there's some really easy ways to connect with Sarah. And one really nice way is to light a candle to her. And it's your intention that creates the magic. I tend to use white for her angels. You can see that one behind me. 
and green for Sarah, but it doesn't matter. It's nice to have special things, but it doesn't matter if you've got whatever candle you've got, you can light it to her. Or if you don't use candles, you can dedicate a crystal to her or anything, anything that you own really. You decide that's a Sarah thing. And then have it like on an altar or just like, I don't particularly have an altar because I'm really short on space. So I'm always creating little altars when I, when I want to connect, you know, energetically and spiritually. So um, <clears throat> and you just sit there and you just call on Sarah to bring her presence in and we'll do that now. We can just have a little practice of this. To just imagine that Sarah is coming in. I'm forming around you. When I call her in, she has a, she has a really integrating effect on me. Kind of, I start to feel like more myself. I start to feel more like physically present. I start to feel I'm more physically alive. I start to feel my emotions more. <laughs> so all those parts of me that sort of have drifted off somewhere else higher up, they all start to come in. I'm just gonna put a cushion under me. They all start to come in. and be in my physical body and this is this is how it's supposed to be we're supposed to be all of it here in divine fullness and Sarah really helps with this I just keep pulling her in, pulling her in, pulling her in. And I'm going to just kind of talk to you in a bit of a stream of consciousness. So I was telling you earlier about um, when Sarah came to me the first time when I was channeling, she introduced herself as the daughter of the Magdalene. And that, as I said, that really ingratiated her to me because <laughs> I love the divine feminine. I just so fallen in love with the divine feminine from the moment that I connected to it. I was like, in my twenties, I was like, oh my God, this is what I've been missing all my life. This is what wasn't present in my Protestant upbringing or in any of the churches I went in or the school or anywhere. And it was just like, oh, it was like finding my soul, you know? And I didn't have a lot of love for the masculine. I liked men. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't in that way, but I had a lot of prejudice against just the whole masculine thing in general. And I can understand that. I mean, I kind of grew up, you know, in the 1970s, it seemed like men did everything. and Women were, yeah, not the ones writing the books and I mean, of course, that's a vast overstatement, but that was the world I grew up with. Men were going out to work much, much more than women. They had much more of the power and the money and so on and so forth. So I had a bit of resentment. However, the beautiful thing about working with Sarah is that whatever side we're strongest with, She'll start there. So whether it's the divine masculine or the divine feminine, she'll come in on that level to us. And then eventually she will bring us all the way through into the other energy, which in my case is the divine masculine. And I've been working a lot with that in the last year and it's just been 
so rewarding and so beautiful, the work for me. And then she will bring us into an integration of the two. And of course, you know, a lot of us are integrated in certain aspects of our life between the divine masculine and the feminine. And it's sort of finding those areas where we haven't um, mastered that, really. But again, you know, that's the lovely thing about Sarah. You don't have to know where these things are. If you work with Sarah, if you call Sarah in. So I have a YouTube channel, Rachel Goodwin, R-A-C-H-E-L-G-O-O-D-W-I-N. There's a Sarah chant on there, Om Shri Sariye Narayani Namostute. It's quite easy to find if you go on there. That chant calls Sarah in. You can sing along to it, the words are there. Or if you're not a chant person, you can just call her in with a candle every day or whatever way you want to do it. And just bring in her presence in. These processes will start to happen with you. You don't have to do anything madly complicated. I mean, of course, you know, I have lots of classes and ways of teaching these things. Um, so if you want to have more substantial and physical ways of working with them, with someone guiding you and giving you symbols and all sorts of things, I have lots of fantastic classes um, on an online school. And you can find that again by going to my website, rachelgoodwin.dk and just click on classes and there's th there's a wonderful class we did this year balancing the divine masculine and feminine and this is kind of the place where a lot of us are at at the moment and it's about getting to the tipping point where you're balanced enough between the divine masculine and the feminine so you come into oneness so the end goal is not balance between the divine masculine and feminine the end goal is this oneness and um, Sarah has been showing me some new ways of reaching into that recently which is quite exciting okay so let me just tune into Sarah again So she's sort of working with us in layers and she's getting us ready to do some of the work. So we've called in her presence now. So just feel that presence around her, around you. Feel Sarah's presence around you or just imagine, just have the intent, it's there. If you have the intent, it's there, it will be there. And then that comes down down, 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 down through your feet, down through your feet, down through your feet, down through your feet, down into the earth star. So we all have an earth star and this is where our incarnation kind of anchors itself into the earth. It's how like earth like supports us in our life. If we didn't have an earth star, we wouldn't have that nourishment from Gaia, from mother earth. And Ask Sarah to place her energy there. And she does this by, it's like painting or drawing a blade of grass or threading in like a green streak of energy. She puts in this green streak of energy into our earth star, like, like that. So just ask her to do that. And this anchors us into the new earth grid. <laughs> which is great for us on two levels. One, most of us spiritual people are not grounded 100% of the time, so it helps ground us. And the other thing is it helps ground us into the right energies. We don't want to, we don't want to ground into all that uh, that's going on. Only enough so we know what to transform and transmute, but we can't transform and transmute the whole. We need to go into something we need to go into the third way 
and that's what the new earth is and that's what Sarah is as well so you all got that going now now let me just I've got bits of paper that I wrote things down on I do this a lot I write down loads of bits of stuff on bits of paper and then I lose them quite often so So there's all sorts of things you can get into with Sarah. There's all sorts of ways that you can connect with her. And, you know, I wrote this book, Sarah's Little Book of Healing, because, and that's the first thing I did, because, you know, at the foundation of my being, I'm a healer. You know, I like coming along and kind of like, fixing things I quite I quite like doing mending I quite like sewing up tears and clothes and things like that um I like make making things last as long as possible I hate to throw things away and just get something new and I think part of that is my healer energy it's like no no don't get rid of that I can you know I can heal it <laughs> make it good again and the healing work that I do with people, um, with Sarah. So over the years, I've devised this whole healing energy system with Sarah. And we work with Sarah's angel. Sarah has her own host of angels. We work with Sarah's violet flame. Sarah has her own violet flame. And we work with Sarah's energy. So in this healing system, we, the angels take us up to the higher vibrations. And it's like, it's like a physical journey. It's like if you've ever done sort of shamanic journey and you, you really journey physically to the different worlds. And it's the same with Sarah's healing system. You journey physically, you and the healer together up into, um, through the grace of Sarah's angels to connect to your higher self. And then you absorb all these finer particles of your higher self. Sarah's violet flame comes in to clear what is within you that's blocking you, you being able to weave them into your light body. And then Sarah's energy comes in as the third energy to do that weaving. And it's just an incredible process. It's really, really beautiful. And Sarah has like brought this through with her teachings to for those of us who need to kind of hasten our evolutionary process or our ascension process or whatever kind of jargon that you know it's it's so difficult with these things because none of them are quite the right words but we just have to do the best with with what we've got but i think you probably know what i mean so that was that was one of the that was one of the things I wanted to um, talk about was that healing system, um, and we have a lovely Facebook group, Sarah's Sacred Circle of Healing, and we do free healing on there. Um, you can also find stuff about it on my website, and I'm teaching a new class in September for the next set of healers. But today, we are really, really focusing on this balance of the divine masculine and the divine feminine, which brings me to the ascension rooms. So a number of years ago, I started getting interested very much in Nordic magic and mythology and spirituality. And it led me to a wonderful lady called Imelda Almquist, who is a Dutch woman who lives in the UK and is married to a Swedish man. And she has been doing training out in the wilds of Sweden, which we were all having a lovely time with until COVID happened. And, and we've had to um, wait for a long time, hoping that the next modules are going to come out. But... Anyway, meanwhile, 
I've been working with the runes, the elder Futhal, and Sarah has really, really come in to teach a lot about this. And that's one of the classes I have on Thinkific, is an introduction to Ascension runes. So the runes, um, some people might know, have been used for darker things, such as in the Second World War. Hitler, for example, used um, runes. Uh, he was a great believer in the occult. And, you know, so there's that sort of, it has darker, darker um, public image on it. However, the runes are just a tool. And the way that Sarah's taught them to me, it's coming through on Sarah's vibration. It's coming through on the new earth vibration. So when we're working with them, it's really at that level of vibration. And the story of the runes is that at the beginning of creation, kind of like we imagine like when the big bang happened, <laughs> the universe explodes into being. And all the, all the runes are created at that moment because the runes themselves are a creation story. So when you follow the runes around, each one holds an energy of creation. And when they're all together, you're in balance. So um, I think I'm going to sing the runes in for us because we're going to do a rune exercise now. Now, you don't need your own set of runes, but it might be quite good to have some pen and paper um, or at least a pen because you can actually draw the runes on yourself or just on a bit of paper. You don't need to have a rune set or you can literally, if you if you're a person that likes to visualize, you can literally just visualize them or you can just chant them. But you don't actually need like, I mean, I often work with runes when I don't have my rune set with me. You just draw them into the air or whatever, because actually the power is within us. It's nice to have your runes. I, I, all my rune sets I've made myself. I've never, I've never bought one. And I really, really love doing that. But anyway, it's a whole other conversation so hang on the work for today is to bring in this that art of divine balance and this is you know Sarah's area of expertise but I'm going to chant the runes in so you may or may not know the elder food arc it's 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 the oldest rune set that we have out of the different ones and it's been around for a long long time some people would say since the beginning of creation and I'm going to sing it through three times and just imagine that a wall of power is building up around you as I sing it balance this creation story these creation energies and I'm going to sing them in their Scandinavian name. So you might know the Elder Futhal can think, oh, what's she singing? Those are, I don't know those ones. I'm not singing the Germanic names. I'm singing the Scandinavian ones. So here we go. There's 24, 24 of them. And Sarah's energy is, is completely in with this as well. It's like a combination of her and, the, and these runes. So we're sitting within a wheel of the runes, a circle of power, of balance, story of creation. And the runes 
ground us and yet can connect to incredibly high energy. So they are wonderful, 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 wonderful tools for people who work with very high vibrations of energy. And certain ones came forward for today. I did write some stuff down, but whether, like I said, whether I can find it. <laughs> Oh no, I can see something with runes on there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, let's start with the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine. Now, all of the runes are vast portals, each one you could see as a living spirit or even a deity. And yet, we can work with them for specific parts of that vast doorway. And we're going to start with working with soul and Largu. Soul is this one here. And it's the rune of the sun. And in Nordic mythology, the sun is actually a sun goddess, which I love. But today we're going to work with it in its masculine counterpart as the divine masculine. And then we have this rune here, which is Largu. And this is the rune of water. So we're seeing these in their elemental aspects. Fire, which today we're working with as the masculine, and water, which today we're working with in the feminine. And I'm going to ask you to work with these one at a time. We're going to bring it in. Don't worry, I will talk you through the whole thing. Don't have to work out how to do it. We're also going to be working with Gifu. And the meaning of this rune is gift. But it's also, it also has a meaning of balance. If you see these two crosses, they're equal armed. There's a strong energy of balance. So, first of all, I just want you to experience the energy of these runes. So we'll start with soul, because fire is always a bit impatient. He always wants to come first. <laughs> and you can either draw this on a piece of paper, draw it on your hand, or you can uh, just chant it. So, if you have it on a piece of paper, just sit and hold it in your hand. Otherwise, you can draw it in front of you and then visualize or have the intention that you're breathing it in and out. You can also just chant along with me. Quite often, when I'm sitting and holding the rune in my hand, I imagine that rune is like exploring. It just sort of happens. I don't imagine it. It just sort of happens. It sort of expands and it grows up. And so that I'm actually sitting in this huge soul. So that can also happen. So <clears throat> whatever way you want to work with this, we're going to, going to give you an opportunity to connect to the energy of the fire, which is representing our divine masculine nature. So we all have divine masculine within us. We're all made of divine masculine and divine feminine at the heart of our the core of our being, whether we're man or woman or gender neutral or, you know, whatever way, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what we are. At the core of our being, we are created by the masculine and the feminine. And the alchemy of bringing them into harmony together is what we're working towards today. So let's start with this Divine Masculine. 
and just hold that symbol or visualize that symbol or sound that symbol you can speak it soul 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 or we can sing it soul 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 remember sarah is all around us we've brought her in we've presenced her she's grounded us into the new earth grid and through her catalytic 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 energy we are connecting to the divine masculine and sarah is a wonderful bridge soul 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 she helps us reach things that we can't reach otherwise carlsberg used to have a wonderful advert that used to make me laugh a lot carlsberg reaches the parts other beers can't reach well sarah is like carlsberg soul 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 and see feel imagine or have the intent that that divine masculine energy is forming all around you and of course yeshua holds this beautiful christ flame divine masculine energy and when i called him in and one of the exercises I do on Patreon, which is another thing that I do, I'll, I'll mention after this. I imagine him, it's like this liquid sunshine energy. Like if sunshine could be like this liquid energy, imagine that pouring all around you and, and the master Yeshua holds that vibration. And what this is doing, it's kind of bringing out your divine masculine. It's bringing out your divine masculine and your divine masculine, it might be in balance already, or it might be underrepresented, or it might be overrepresented. But because we've brought Sarah in, and Sarah is about creating this balance, it's bringing it in in a way that's balanced and harmonized. So already we're starting to harmonize it, even though we haven't done anything special yet, just because Sarah's energy is here. So let's just have one last. So just either see the symbol, breathe it in and out, sit within its energy, or chant it with me. Soul, soul, soul. Just feel your whole energy body just opening up, opening up, opening up. And receiving, 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 receiving that divine masculine energy in whatever quantity or quality you need. That's lovely. Okay. Now we're going to do the same with Largu. We're going to do the same with Largu. And this is the rune of water. And today we're working with it in its divine feminine energy. So draw that on a bit of paper or on your hand or work with the runes if you have them or simply just visualize it. Draw it in front of you. You can imagine that you're breathing in and out. You can imagine that it's coming into your body and extending its way through the whole of your energy body. Or you can sing it with me. Lagu, lagu, lagu. Lagu, lagu, lagu. Lagu. Lagu, lagu. Just feel the difference in the quality of the energy that's coming through. Or perhaps you can see a different colour of energy as you're, as you're working with this room. This is the divine feminine energy. And this is represented by Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene holds this energy. And when I call on Mary Magdalene, 
I see her as pink. So if you like that idea and you like that colour, you can breathe pink into your heart. Feel yourself filled with this divine feminine energy. Lago, 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 Lago. The energy of the divine feminine, the element of water. Lago, Lago, Lago. Just open up your energy body to receive all that you need from this room of Lagu, bringing through the aspect of the Divine Feminine, Mary Magdalene's energy. And maybe you are in balance with this energy. Maybe you are underrepresented in this energy or overrepresented in this energy. But because we've called Sarah in, we're now coming into balance. Now, we're going to work with and bring in the third room, which is Gifu. And this we're working with today in its aspect of balance, creating harmony and integration. And we're going to work with the power of three. I sound like charm there. That's a TV show if no one's ever seen it. Three sisters they are, which is power of three. We're going to work with the power of three and put soul into one hand and Largo into the other. It doesn't matter which, which. Just go with what feels right. And if you don't have them on bits of paper, just imagine them in your hand. Just sit and hold one in each hand and just see how that feels first before we bring Gifu in. When you hold the two of them together, they create like a portal, a tension of energy. They are polar opposites. The divine feminine and the divine masculine, fire and water. And then I want you to imagine that Gifu is like coming down from above you and like coming down to stand like completely over your energy force. So we've called in soul, the fire, we've called in Lago, the water, and now we're going to call in Gifu. So either have the intention to presence itself through your body, chant it with me, whatever, whatever way is working for you. Gifu, 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 Gifu. That harmony sign is coming through and it's going, the cross is happening right at your heart center. The cross is happening right at your heart center. And just call in Sarah now. Call in Sarah now. Because Sarah is representing this integrating, balancing, harmonizing force. Call in Sarah now. Bring her into your hearts. Helping you balance divine masculine, divine feminine within yourself and see Sarah's green light radiating out from your heart and then expanding 360 degrees in all directions, filling the whole of your energy body, the whole of your energy body, the whole of your energy body. All is well, all is well, all is well. And then I just want you to sit a little while longer. I'll do a little bit more chanting while you're sitting in these energies. So, he fu lagu. So.
Just let those energies all settle down. And what will be happening is within your energy body, through sympathetic resonance to these runes, to the chanting, to the visualizations, things will be arranging themselves within your light body. So it might feel a little bit like you've been stretched, could even feel a bit uncomfortable as it is like when we start to use new muscle groups in our body, it feels a little bit uncomfortable at first. But then as we work with it, it brings strength and new energy. So I've got two more rooms to do the same with, but we'll just pause for a moment. I'll just tune into Sarah. And give time for that energy work to settle in. So I mentioned um, my Patreon site. And this is the work that I'm doing for my third book. I'm writing my second one at the moment. And the second one is all the strands of Sarah. I've taken channelings I've done over the years to kind of show like the work she's done with me and the vastness really of what she's come to work with. So it's all the different strands that are making up Sarah's weave of energy. Um, and there's a lot of things to, to find in there for, for people. And there's so little about Sarah. Um, so hopefully this book will be a good resource for people who want somewhere to start with. Because this book, it's lovely. It's lovely for healing. It does sort of say about, um, you know, who she is and what she's here for. But it doesn't give this, this sort of overall, um, so much more has come forward since I wrote that book. Uh, it's about seven years old well i published it seven years i think i wrote it even longer ago than that um, and this new one is going to give a lot more information but the patreon site so if you don't know what patreon is patreon is a platform for creators whether it's podcasts podcasters or artists or it's for all sorts of people and i've used it to bring through sarah's teachings and uh, a number of years ago, Sarah gave me a 12 step um, guide to embodied ascension. <laughs> so embodied ascension is um, we're not trying to ascend off the planet as, you know, used to be or the goal with um, gurus and Buddhas and so on. We're not trying to escape the wheel of suffering. We're actually ascending while we're here on the earth in our bodies um, and bringing it all together in in one place and we're doing this because we can it's not actually been possible to do this before now because the earth's um energy body hasn't been and the humanity's energy body hasn't been in a place to do this now the earth is ascended already. The earth is an ascended being, but she has kind of slowed her progress down 
The same as women do when they're pregnant. They have to slow down while they're pregnant with that baby. And the earth has slowed herself down for us so that we can develop. And, you know, she loves us in the same way that, you know, a mother loves her child and is willing to make those sacrifices to go a bit slower and perhaps delay the career progress a bit or whatever. <laughs> uh, it's not a completely correct an analogy, but, you know, it's, I think it's, it's good enough. But um, oh, I sort of went off. Yeah, so this 12-step this process to embodied ascension. So you work at it, we work at it a month at a time, and there's different teachings and ways forward. But if you're interested in looking at that, you can see that everything's on my website that I'm talking about. You just go on to rachelgoodwin.dk because um, I'm in Denmark, I'm British, but I live in, I live in Denmark. And um, you just look at the titles and click on Patreon. So where was I? There is a second lot of rooms to work with. Okay, so these rooms now, these rooms are about earth and spirit. Or well, you could say heaven and spirit. And it's about the breath of life. So this is the earth room that we're using to represent the earth. This is Pertre. And then this rune here, this is Ass. This is the rune, the breath of life rune. It's Odin's rune. And it's sort of like an F but with the arms going up. It's like we're receiving the breath of spirit down into us. It's coming down into our bodies. And then Petra. This also has lots of meanings, but in today's aspect, we're sort of, this is like caves and stones and the body of the earth and that sort of heavy, heavy matter and light spirit are the ways that we're, we're, we're working with this today. And Sarah is so connected to working with the earth realms. She, I've seen her so strongly in her aspect of being like a forest witch, a nature being, um, very, very in tune with the cycles of nature and all the plants and knowing all the plants and what they are medicinally and also using all of these things and the elemental elements and the nature spirits as you know, and working with them magically as well. She has an extremely strong magical energy. Um, and she is working very, very actively with us on the earth grid at the moment. So this is another layer to um, Sarah and one that I'll be focusing more concentratedly on next year um, where I'm bringing through modules for the priests and priestesses, the earth priests and priestesses of Sarah, where you learn a lot of metaphysical stuff in like how to work. We can create power places ourselves now working with Sarah, which is incredible. I've done it here in Roskilo where I live. Um, there's so much like new age, like technology coming through now and and sarah has is like she's really fab at all this stuff she's really like a an earth engineer in a very lemurian or like atlantean way so that's another one of her skill sets but today we're going to work with um these rooms to try and balance them up a little bit in ourselves and again this is area, this is an area of polarity where a lot of um, people who are interested in spirituality are struggling one way or the other. And like I said before, you don't have to know what the problems are 
when you when you bring the energies in this way it will soon become apparent because <laughs> they, they work with you and then things start to come up into the consciousness and you can't miss it <laughs> you, you kind of like it gets put in front of you you have to work with this so i think we'll start with ass first so you can either just visualize this room draw it on a bit of paper and hold it you can breathe it in and out you can draw it in front of you see yourself breathing it in and out you can chant it along with me and this is the rune of spirit it's very connected to the breath just see if you can get a sense of its energy as we work with it in this way so us 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 like father sky energy opening up above us 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 as we open up to the highest heavens the highest vibrational realms us 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 embracing our heritage as star children us, us, us. Feel that beautiful spirit energy, whatever way it comes through for you. To sit and bathe in that for a moment. And we're going to bring in this earth energy now. Patra. Again, you can just draw it in front of you. Breathe in and out. Have it on a piece of paper, write it on your hand. And this is invoking the heavy energy of matter now. And in their own ways, these runes are divine masculine, divine feminine. With this, the divine spirit being the masculine. And the divine feminine being the, the energy of heavy matter, the earth, the caves, the stones. Petra, 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 Petra. Petra, 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 Petra. Feel that energy grounding of the earth, Gaia, Mother Earth. Feel your physical body that you occupy, the space that you occupy in your physical body. Petra, Petra. Petra, you're grounding, grounding, grounding into this beautiful, nourishing energy of the earth. Petra, Petra, Petra. Breathe that symbol, that rune in and out of yourself. Petra, Petra, Petra. And because we already have Sarah's energy in all around us, her presence. Sarah is presencing all around us. We're already coming more into balance within ourselves in these things. But just to really, really kind of pump up that process, what we're going to do now is have Petra in one hand, Ass in the other hand. 
doesn't matter which way you put them around, whatever way they just sort of go. And we're going to bring Gifu into the centre of us. And we can imagine it coming down from above or coming up from below or just approaching you 360 degrees. But it's going to come in right across your body and it's going to be the cross is going to be meeting in your heart center so let's just do that now we're bringing gifu so you have earth in one hand spirit in the other we're going to which are polar opposites creates a tension holding one in each hand and then we're going to bring in gifu which is like the Sarah energy in this case, to alchemize the two together as much as we can in our own bodies at this present time. Gifu, 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 Gifu. Gifu, 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 Gifu. I feel the tension of opposites. They're being alchemized within you, within your energy body, within your physical body, within all that you are. Gifu, Gifu, Gifu. And just sit and rest. For a moment, I'm going to chant all of the names for us, Pautra and Gifu. As Pautra, as Pautra, as Pautra, Gifu, Gifu, Gifu. Aspertra, 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 Gifu, Gifu, Gifu. Aspertra, 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 Gifu, Gifu, Gifu. Aspertra, 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 Gifu, Gifu, Gifu. Take a deep breath. Blow the energy out. Do this three times. The alchemy is happening within the magic of your own physical body. Energy changes are starting to happen now. If you need to stand up, move around, have a stretch. Oh. So if you want to keep this process going, you could do this once a week. If you're really keen, you could do it every day. But once a week will be pretty powerful by itself. Always remember to call Sarah in first, though, because without her, it doesn't have the same effect. So Sarah, she's a little bit like magic spice, you know? If you add her into other things, she has a magical effect that just doesn't happen if she's not there. So whatever your practices are at the moment, if you get inspired to call Sarah in, do it, because she's a catalyst. Of course, we don't always want a catalyst. Sometimes we don't want things to happen too fast. They need to happen at a slower pace. So I'm just going to have a bit of my ascension spray. So the town where I live in Roskila, it has lots of springs, ley lines, vortices, power places, um, and I've made a lot of vibrational essences, a whole box of them. It's a proper little witch's um, house this where I live and um, I've put a lot of them together and made an ascension spray and it just really supports the energy body with all these changes you can also find that in my website if you go into the store 
and I send it out as a stock bottle. So you get a lot for your money. You can use it. And it's good because you do, you know, the changes that we're going through at the moment, it's just like, it's so much. It's so much for us to go through. So, <sighs> take another deep breath. That was very powerful, that work there. And because it goes right down into the physical, um, it works through all of the spheres and across all of the realms. So it's like, you know, a big of energy that comes through. So I think I might want to channel Sarah. Well, I think Sarah might want me to channel her. I think I said that round the wrong way. <clears throat> yeah. All right, then. I'll go quiet for a moment, then when I start talking, it will be Sarah channeling again, so. <sighs> Welcome, I am Sarah. A great deal of information has been given today. Take the parts which resonate with you. And as for the rest, well, if you get called, you can always come back and listen again at a later date. But through this entire time, my energy, this energy of oneness, of unity, the divine masculine, and the divine feminine come together to create a third unique energy has been permeating your energy body now this energy it is already part of who you are at the core of your being you already have the seeds of this energy within you Everything that you are, everything that you will ever be is already within you as seeds. It is really about creating the right conditions for those seeds to grow. And this is one of the things that I have come to teach. I am a teacher. I am a mentor. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm here to walk by your side, whispering words at the right moment. You are coming into mastery yourself. That is why you are hearing my call and being drawn towards my work. I am Sarah and you can call upon me any time when you need me. Whether you feel me come at your call or not, I will be there. Whether you sense my presence or not, I will be there. Whether you believe in my presence or not, if you call me, I will be there offering my support offering my light, offering my love, offering my gift of integration. With my energy, you can bring back all the split off, lost parts of yourself. So remember to use this gift that I am offering if you are doing past life work shadow work, parts therapy, any of these things. I am a support for any therapy work. You are coming back into wholeness, you are healing. And in that wholeness, you come ever closer and closer to the divine to your divine selves. This is who you are. You are coming home to yourselves. You are coming back 
to yourselves. Some of you are called to work with me. Some of you have worked with me many, many, many lifetimes. Some of you just need a little bit of my energy and then you go onto your own path, going your own way, and that is all well as well. I am here for star seeds. I am here for new souls. I am here for old souls. I am here for everyone, regardless of religion, of race, of age, of creed, of planet. I am Sarah. And these are the words which I wish to speak. My blessings are upon you each and every moment of your life. Blessed be, blessed be, blessed be. Amen. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely light energy that was coming in with her today. I think we needed that after all that room work. That was quite heavy. So I have two classes coming up. Two Zoom calls, one in July and one in August. I'll tell you about the one in August first. This is two called Sowing the Seeds of Sarie, and it is about activating these seeds in your heart. It's a transmission from Sarah, and it's the first part if you want to um, go further with the work with Sarah. It's the first part, and um, it's going to be really, really really beautiful experience. We take a journey into the heart of the tour. Um, we make a connection with Sarah. It's, it's very, very gentle work, very um, sacred. And you can find that by going on rachelgoodwin.dk. You have a look along the headings and go up a little bit says Zoom calls. If you click on there, you can see it on there and then you can go into it and see more. I haven't put that many details on about it yet, um, but I'll be adding things to it. So that's that Zoom call. The other Zoom call is part of a series of activations. So our light bodies are, you know, going through a lot of changes and Sarah kind of is the new earth. She is the energy of the new earth. So she has a lot to offer us. And I'm really good at channeling her energies. It's one of, you know, the gifts that I have is being able to like send out electromagnetic energies to other people so that they can benefit. And we did a brain activation a couple of months ago, which was, it was actually really, really helpful because I was getting to the point where I was having a lot of real problems thinking. And these activations, they sort of bring in like new alignments and new new lines of energy like it's almost like changing the computer program or updating it upgrading it yeah not changing it so much but upgrading it and of course you know we are doing these things all the time anyway but it's just like it's like getting that extra hand up basically so your energy system can just like switch cleanly over to it and make sure it's all working properly and um we're doing one next month in july and it's the heart activation and that is like, I'm really looking forward to that one I, I really need an upgrade really really it'll upgrade all the energies around there and there will be other ones as well I don't know what order they will come in but these are all part of a series of activations on Facebook we have another Facebook group and again if you go on my website you can see all these different things if you look under Sarah's temple of the sacred flame because we are doing a lot of work with Sarah's flame, the Magdalene flame and Yeshua's flame as well. And um, we've actually created like a sacred space in this Facebook group. So like when you go into the group, you're actually entering into Sarah's temple of the sacred flame. And these activations, they are part of the work to just help assist us in aligning to all of this stuff. So. Let me just see if there's anything else that I haven't gotten to that I need to get to. And I will just ask Sarah about that. 
<sighs> Straight away, she's reminding me that it's really important for us to remember that this is supposed to be joyous. <laughs> I mean, you know, just speaking for myself, the last 10 years have been really hard. The last couple of years haven't got any lighter um, with COVID and, and all of the, you know, restrictions that we're, we're living under. Um, like me personally, I have been able to see my 18 year old son missed his 18th birthday, I've missed him passing his driving test. He's in the UK and I'm in Denmark, his first girlfriend. Um, and, yeah, and I still don't know when I'm going to be able to see him because of travel restrictions. We can't actually travel to see each other at the moment. Um, but Sarah is saying, you know, remember to find those moments of joy. Remember to find the happiness. And you kind of have to like ask for it. Like when you get up in the morning, like, okay, angels or Sarah or God or goddess, divine or whoever, please show me the moments of joy. Please make sure I don't miss them <laughs> in my day to day. And so I was writing down like notes and I'm using, um, I'm using, you know, I, I, I don't like to waste paper. So this is something Benji brought home from school. He's supposed to have colored it in. But my son Benji, he's a our son. He has special needs. He goes to a special needs school, and this is he hates colouring. He doesn't do it. But <laughs> I think it. it's the sacred marriage, isn't it? And look how happy they are. They are just so happy. They're coming together, and that is that is what we're working towards. Like literally, like within ourselves, we're working on creating that joy. Um, <laughs> of marrying the divine masculine and the divine feminine together within us so they can have this, so they can give birth to the fullness of our uh, divinity within us. And, you know, there's also that whole thing about like fully human, fully divine and the joy that it brings. But, but also, you know, until we're all on like different stages of getting there, until we get there, Let's try and have a good a time as possible. <laughs> so, lots of blessings. Thank you um, for all of you who've watched today and will watch in the future. Please come and have a look at my website. I didn't mention my podcast to you. I am um, a bit of an avid podcaster. I am a bit addicted. I don't really have the time for it, but I can't help it. It's sort of like my hobby. I really love talking to interesting people. So come and have a look at my podcast as well. That's it. I'm going to stop telling you about stuff now. Lots of blessings. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.